This is Essential. 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 This is Essential Audio. Welcome back to the Money Pot from Money 2020. I'm Scarlett Sieber, Senior Editor. And I'm Sanjeev Kalita, Editor-in-Chief. So, what are we talking about today, Chief? Today, we're chatting about what I think is at the core of all innovation, particularly in financial services. The base of all financial services is moving money. To move money, you need a system that maintains value. Whether you are moving gold by wagon, or cash by trains, or checks by mail, or the current system of a myriad of digital transfers, Money is moved in exchange for goods and services. We are always trying to optimize how we move money. Optimize and economize. The object is to move it as safely, quickly, and cheaply as possible. Yes, and so I was chatting with my friend Marwan Forsley, who's the founder of Veeam. Hasn't Marwan started a lot of companies? Yes, he has. He founded Moda Solutions, specializing in ticketing and event services. And then he founded eBillMe which created a way for secure debit or debit-based payments online. He sold that to Western Union in 2011. So being a founder and a CEO is not a new experience. And now I know who to go to when I need my next loan. So what problem is he trying to solve now? He's now looking at international payments for small business. Yeah, so we we founded Veeam on uh, the premise that global payments is a really messy experience at the moment. And we wanted to change that experience completely. And so we're not really looking for uh, minor incremental changes to the experience. We're looking to provide completely different experience to the user. But also at the heart of it, there's the concept of multi-rail, which is essentially using multiple methods of delivering payments um, based on whatever is best for the user experience. Okay, so like many others, he's looking to make international payments simple. So what did he mean when he said multi-rail? So instead of using one mode to move money, they're looking at all the inefficiencies and finding the fastest and most secure way. And they make the interface for business owners painless. So if you imagine you have a small business, for example, you are a guy in North Carolina and you sell artisanal blown glass, and suddenly your designs are all the rage in Thailand and Italy, you have a website that you set up with Squarespace and you took pictures of your glass and you put it up for sale. Okay, so you sell them to the Italians and Thai people and you're ready to ship it, but you wait on their payments and you don't know why it takes so long to clear. You don't care how the payments went through the various verification and transfer processes. You want to get payments quickly so you can ship quickly. The idea is to make the process incredibly simple for the small business and use the systems that transfer safest, quickest, and cheapest. So they use whichever system is best for each portion of the transaction, whether it's Swift, blockchain, or any other system. Aha, now we get to it, that word blockchain. They use blockchain? It's one of the many rails they use. So when you say blockchain, a lot of people are going to think cryptocurrencies. Actually, Marwan and I agree that blockchain isn't equivalent to cryptocurrencies at all. I asked him about what he saw happening to blockchain. I see the cryptocurrencies to be a, a an application of the blockchain, it's sort of like a, a use case of it. The blockchain technology is foundational and it's broad, uh, and the digital currencies are sort of first manifestation of what you can do with that code. Uh, the future of the blockchain, I think of the blockchain uh, kind of like an operating system. Uh, so this is a foundational piece of technology. So if the blockchain is an operating system, there are going to be many applications that run on blockchain. In fact, there already are. Some musicians and artists are taking cryptocurrencies as payments and relying on blockchain for delivery of tickets. There are even love notes and marriage contracts on the blockchain. Oh, really? So the future of celebrity prenups, perhaps? Question for you. If they already have those in place, why hasn't everyone converted their systems to employ blockchain? Well, first, blockchain technologies aren't mature enough to handle all the traffic that is required. The original Bitcoin blockchain can only process seven transactions per second. There are many since then that have improved on it, and some are processing up to 10,000 transactions per second. But that would never meet global demand. Visa, for example, runs anywhere from two to 4,000 transactions per second and has the capacity to run 24,000 transactions per second. So they're like a baby processor. Their capacity is simply too low to compete. And when we add use cases like preventing ticketing fraud or supply chain verification, the volumes simply could explode. 
I know that there is still a lot of interest because of the distributed ledger. And now that I think about it, I can't think of a single large financial institution that isn't investigating blockchain use cases. You're right. The distributed ledger would allow for nearly instantaneous, secure, verified payments and contract fulfillment without a middleman. It would be an ultimate solution to moving money fast, cheap, and quick. So Sanji, with your expertise, how fast do you think it will mature? We, we can't really know how fast it'll happen. Marwan and I talked about how it compares to other technologies. And so they all have the same cycles to them. It's like a movie, you know, it plays again all the time. And so it starts with uh, a lot of hype in terms of what you can do with, with these types of um, uh, technologies. Then it goes through a reality phase where, you know, people uh, start to uh, look at applications that have real uh, business cases to them. And so it goes through a long period of that and then it emerges again. And that's where you start to see the large scaling happen. And so blockchain has a similar is going to have a similar pattern to it. Marwan compared it to the history of AI and how that has developed. You know, the early versions of it uh, were actually in the like 1960s, and then it evolved. Uh, there was a period of time where, um, you know, even IBM was talking about deep learning back in the 70s. And uh, it's a concept that uh, took some time for it to gel, and there was variations of it. Um, Initially, starting with the concept that uh, AI um, is uh, is really about uh, figuring out how to use a pattern to simplify uh, an operation, uh, but the whole uh, industry evolved into uh, all kinds of applications. And so there there's been a, a history of uh, that uh, technology to get it to a stage where now it. And something that you'll see in, embedded in all kinds of applications. So the concepts of AI are as old as science fiction. Real research and money has been put into it for over 60 years. We have Watson, and AI is doing amazing things with data analysis. Marwan is also using it as part of the multi-rail system. Uh, some of the routing algorithm we use to move money between different rails, there are components of it that are uh, AI-based. There are a lot of worries around AI, and Bai says it would inherit from us. There are, and they are serious. The bulk of innovation isn't going to be using one of these technologies or another. It's going to be using them in combination. Both AI and blockchain are needed to make the multi-rail system possible for international payments. We see combinations of AI, blockchain, and cloud that could utilize the strengths of each to create processes that are smoother and more equitable. Combining AI and the cloud will change so much about investing. And as quantum computing enters a picture, combining that with the cloud, AI and blockchain will revolutionize abilities to predict market volatilities, credit scoring, pricing of goods and services. It will eventually transform the phone that has become so much a part of our daily lives. This could have vast implications in every field, from money to energy, to climate change, to the very nature of the internet. Woo! Your passion is palpable. And there it is, everyone. The geek out. It's incredibly exciting to think about how vastly these technologies used together can change our world. Which brings me back to the bias of AI, and I want to touch on diversity. These technologies show that we are in the process of redesigning our world, and so it is very important that every part of our society is part of that redesign. As we redesign financial services, there is no innovation that will be as important as drawing from the entire talent pool, including women, minorities, and people of different interests across the globe. Absolutely. We can make new things, but innovation is most useful and smartest when it incorporates diverse points of view and varied experiences. We will be discussing all of these possibilities in much more detail at the upcoming Money 2020 conference in Las Vegas, October 27th through the 30th. Yes, and it's less than two months away. Register now. We also want to thank Marwan Forsley for being part of today's show. And we want to thank our producers, Rachel Morrissey and Roland Bottenham, and our team, Sabina Osorio, Melissa Miller, Keisha Allison, and Monique Ruffbell. And go subscribe to The Money Pot for Money 2020 wherever you listen to your podcasts. We will see you all at Money 2020. This is essential. 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 This is Essential Audio.